<laughs> it's six o'clock. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Wilton Select Board meeting of April 5th. Minutes of the March 15th Select Board meeting. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any questions, concerns, errors, omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Unanimous. Public comment. No comments? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Private comments. Approval of the 2022 police cruiser bid. This is the bid that Heidi had come in and asked about putting out. She did. Um, sent out to at least three places. We only received one of the bids back, I think, at one of the places. Um, the vehicle was sold last week. The other one, they didn't have any on site and it would be ordering and they didn't put a bid in. And the third one was a bid um, from Quirk Auto Group. The amount is 37,224.80. Let's see if I can try make that a little bit larger someplace. And this is the one that we were going to keep our current cruiser? Correct. Correct. Um, we had the specs checked out before we sent out the bids and then I brought this down to the mechanic because the mechanic, our town mechanic does all the work on it. So um, I hadn't checked the specs after we got this bid. Keith? Is it close to what we thought it was going to be? Yes. I remember our number thrown Correct. out, but I don't remember what that, that was. That was a, basically the number yes, that's used. Yes, it actually is cheaper. Than I was going to say, isn't that form. less? The farm to form was 42. So actually, it was quite a bit less. I thought it was less than what the chief had brought to us. Correct. So you're looking for a motion? Yes, sir. I'll make that motion. Second. <coughs> What's the motion? To approve? Whatever we need to say. Yes. However we need Most to say approve. it. <laughs> And second is the same way. Any questions? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Consideration of the paving bids. Bidding. 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 And basketball court and truck. How did that all get put under one? It's all about bidding, I guess? It's just bidding out. So I, I can explain. Um, this is These are the bid specs going that John will send out for the Recreation Department um, basketball court. John did up the specs for that, and is Frank has already been in to say that he wanted to have that paved, and I asked John, John to do the, the specs for it. This will come out of the um, yeah. out of the recreation trust fund money. Uh, the Buren Trust. The Buren Trust. Okay, sorry. Or I thought however, it was the other one. No. yeah. Okay, and then also John has done his annual bids for um, paving, and the bids are contingent upon town approval of the budget. What he has put in are the following roads to be um, to be bid upon and if there is not enough then he also has in his road priority one which ones were um, one through seven in priority. So all he is asking is just for permission to send these out and that's it. What about the track? The truck, um, he has not done the bid up yet for the truck because the um, truck companies have said we have, don't have our information yet, so it's a little bit too soon. So um, that we just found out, but I still had that on that. So. That was the ton truck. That's, that's the ton truck. So that will be budget. yeah. Once they once they get the specs and know, then he will do up the specs and uh, ask to send that out too. All right. So we need a motion for the two. For paving bids for the roads and the basketball okay. court. I'll do that. I'll second that. And moved and second. Any questions? 
my only one comment would be is I assume the CMA is cold mix. Cold mix. Um, I'm not sure that's good bang for the buck. But well, let no, me. I agree with that. Right, but let me explain what roads these are on. Um, so on Boobia Road, it's going to be cold mix, but then it's also going to be reclaimed with cold mix, and that's a, that's a not a real busy road there. But Webster Road, there's only one person on Webster Road, and the same thing on Parsons Road. And those were the, the reasons for those two particular ones. I mean, this will be done now, and it'll probably be... 20 years or so or more that before it needs it again. There is only one house on those two. Were there more conversation when we do bids? Yeah. We're just putting it out to bid tonight. That's right. And, I'll t and same thing with Adams Farm Road. That's another one of those short roads um, with only one house on it. I forgot about that one. That so one should be too. there. <laughs> Good luck. So, yeah. um, so all those in favor of putting them out to bed, it's unanimous. I guess he's not here. We'll put his report to the next time. Okay. Medical marijuana update and consideration of permit fees paid, not paid. Um, after the four medical marijuana um, sites were approved, I think it was in January, Two of them paid immediately within a few days, but we are still waiting on two of the other businesses to pay. So therefore, they have not been issued their um, town license yet. And um, a marijuana ordinance does state you have to have all your permits and licenses in place. And this again, like I said, it's been since January. They've been contacted, um, still have not paid. From what I could see in reviewing of the marijuana ordinance, which I have um, sent to you, you know, I, I did a link, that um, the next step would be to probably have them come in if they don't pay, you know, within two weeks, and we'll do a public hearing for them before you decide on the next steps. Okay? Yep. There so do are we, we want a motion to request a meeting with those two? Do we have a letter and notify them that at the next select board meeting? We'll send a letter and uh, send a notice. Make a motion we send a letter to tell them to be here with a check in their hands. Second. I moved and second. Questions? On a normal permit, not marijuana, the permit would be invalid. Yeah, this is true. Is there so a, they're currently invalid. They're currently invalid according to our ordinance. Okay, so they're... All right. So is there recourse? We should send a letter. We should send the letter. Um, part of it is, for me, it's a growing learning, learning curve for the town as well as the businesses. Um, so I think we should be mindful in that respect. But what is the other recourse if they snub their nose at us? And for that, then you would notify the from you. You have um, options of finding them. That was in, in the marijuana ordinance. And then um, I believe you would also notify the state that they're in operation in without violation. all of their in violation. Okay. But this will give them the opportunity to be able to come and explain why they haven't paid it. So should the letter state <coughs> some of our options that we can take? I would think it would lay out the, Put our plan the I'll, process. I'll we'll attach the marijuana yep. ordinance. To Maybe it. highlight. Yeah. The next steps. So all those in favor of sending notification, it's unanimous. Consideration of ATV access policy. We are moving towards getting the ATV access um, route set in place before ATV season. In fact, in, I'm trying to find my increasing in size here. There we go. In fact, in Wilton, we already have the ATV. We've already ordered them. We already have them, the ATV access route signs. So we're all set to go. Um, and on the Temple Road, the Main Street portion of that is all set to be installed. And the Temple ATV Club will be ordering their signs 
and then work with our highway department. So I did up um, an ATV access route policy based in part on what some other towns have done. I um, sent this out to you and I did have a couple changes back since I first sent it out. So this is a second draft. So I highlighted it. One of the comments I got back was I had down like a day to May 1st through whatever and I was told that there's no set date on when the whistle stop trail opens and it may be later. Sometimes it's been as late as June. I don't think that will happen this year. So um, I changed it to read when the whistle stop trail opens generally made through October. And the, um, because they can't start riding on our route unless they have the access trail to come off of. And I put down the times instead of somebody going, oh, it's nine o'clock, I could leave. Sunrise to sunset, because that changes throughout the summer. And all other times the ATV access routes will be posted as closed. I think they generally get covered. I did add in that um, ATVs may park in vehicle parking spaces or public parking lots only. Parking or riding on sidewalks is prohibited. And then and the next part, um, when we first talked about putting this all together, since Depot Street is so narrow, and the same thing with Main Street, it's going to be difficult for ATVs to hug the right side, as it says in state law. It says that in state law and less the authority, select board authority says you can travel in the travel lane. So when we first originally started meeting, we determined you know, the only way to do Depot Street and Main Street is to go in the travel lane. Those particular speed limits, so I've got that Depot Street and Main Street, and then the other access route is Temple Road from the Temple Town line. It's about four miles or so um, on Temple Road then cross over to Main Street and then hit the Whistle Stop Trail. So I put the speed limits for Temple Road at 20 miles per hour, even though the speed limit is higher on Temple Road. Main Street, these in East Wilton, the speed limit is 25 right there, so I put that down at 25. And actually the Temple ATV Club kind of asked if 20 was what we would want. Then on Depot Street, to where am I? Depot Street, starting off of Whistle Stop Trail, near Steve's Market. The speed limit there is 30 miles per hour. I put it at 30. Um, then it hits 25 at Davis Court. You know, you're following whatever is posted. So when it says 25, they can go 25. When it says 30, they can go 30. Main Street all the way is 25. So it's really basically traffic speed on on the um, access trail on Depot and Main Street. So my only concern is I see one outlier there, Temple Road, which is a rural road. We're only going to do 20, but in town we're going to do 25. I wouldn't drive a pass at the 20 on the Temple Road. <laughs> I live on it. It's, it's a good town maintained road. I just, <laughs> for me, it'd just be consistency and have it at 25. Yeah. I don't know if she's ordered the signs yet. I'm here, so I'm listening. Yeah, there you yeah. are, you too. Well, that's Sorry. just for me. Like I say, that's just an outlier speed limit. Well, I um, was coming up the Temple Road today, tonight, and it actually says 30. It, yeah, it's on, the, on the Temple end of... Yeah, and then uh, it increases, doesn't although, it? See, I thought it said 35 at some point. It's 35, right, not okay. too far from my house, right oh, where you come right. off Morrison Hill Road. But it does say 30 when I have it right at the, like, as you start to come up the hill. And then I guess it changes the so 35. I just, I just threw out 20 because most of these, what I've written in other counties, seems like 20 is the what they put on roads, like a more of a rural road. Yeah. So on the Temple Road, there's kind of two issues. One, are you going to want people traveling 35 miles down the road in the travel lane there? Two, if they do go slower, they are going to tend to hug the, the side more. What you'll see the, the con on that particular part is that can start to wear away the sides of it. Remember, John has spoken about that. <coughs> no, like I say, for me, it was just the outlier that you have one odd number there. So that was there just, did you order your signs already? No, but what we've also done, because we, because again, the, I guess the, throughout the state, they recognize that you, 
get off, you're, you're crushing down that piece of tar. Right. So we've actually got some signs on our tar roads that say stay on the tar. Like, but off to the, as far as you go, but don't ride good the edge. off. So we can, yeah, that, we that, can add something like that. Yep, that's so basically. stay on the tar path. Okay. And what is your speed limit in tempo? 20. You'll be 20 in yeah, tempo. Yeah, our trails happen to be 20. Like Day Mountain Road's 20. Uh, the Intervale's 20. It's just that that's, that was before you know I became involved, but that seems to be the going. And I'm okay with the 20, but I would think that we would have one speed. And that way they are, if police are actually out doing some enforcement, well, which road am I on? Which section am I on? You know, we know that all ATV speeds are X. Well, all of them are posted speed limit except for Temple Road. Exactly. So if you're going to do that, you'd have to make Temple Road posted speed limit like all the others. And then there's no question. Which is 35. You can see. Yeah, you can't change the DOT road speed limit. So if it is 25, you, the ATVs have to go 25. Right, they, they all are except Temple Road. Temple right, Road, right, we're, we're suggesting going slower than the posted speed. Right. But all the others, we're suggesting posted speed. Right, which I think you have the consistency of Temple is 20, then you go down to Temple 20. Just into Temple is going to be kind of more, uh, in my eyes, other than Birch Street, that Temple Road's going to have more people flying around. So you might as well go a little slower. Especially, I mean, that's the same thing with motorcycles. People I'm around. fine with it. I just, I just it just looks as an outlier in policy. Yeah. And that's not hard to remember for us. Temple Road's 20. So then moving on. Somewhere uh, right here. Um, Main Street... Right, Main Street here. I have this Main Street to the memorial on Main Street as to where it's ending. I have been asked about what about it going to the lake. From our standpoint of uh, town departments, employees watching it, there is so much congestion, congestion down at the lake, whether it's at the boat launch or the foot of the lake with people in vehicles that we've been at the point sometimes where we've hired people to go down from the rec department to kind of watch it on really hot days. My suggestion, and it's up to you, is that for the first year you see how it goes and you have to evaluate every year in December or December to May anyway. And then if you go, this was great, there wasn't that many, we can open it to the lake because they can still park and walk or well, that's within your 1,500 feet to get to the access I, road. I think, I think we should let them go up High Street and down that other road to the boat lane. I really do. I don't think we should hold them back. Is that a road or a private driveway? There's a road in the back of yeah. the back of the Well, they could even park in that parking lot and walk from there, but just I think they should be able to make it at least a boat lane. How far is boat landing do you know? I know, but... 500 it's feet is the access. Is it? It's yeah, not 1,500. It's 500. I think it was last well, night. we've got a map, but we can look. Yeah. It's going to be pretty close. So if that's the case, then you're going to ask for another access. You want the access route extended up? We, the original request was to get to the lake, and we've stopped short of that original request. So it's up to you to decide. This is just what I put in as suggestions, and... Um, that's why I'm telling you right now. And I think we would be better off going down that other road than we would be going down Lake Road. That's just my okay. thoughts. There's a lot of people and, walking on Lake Road and we and, and going the across that yeah. bridge is narrow yeah. with the sidewalk. But you do have boats that you'll in going across the bridge and stuff like that. So there probably is parking in the High Street parking lot. And the Canal Street parking lot, except for busy lake days, then we send people that have boats and trailers to High Street parking lot. I don't think we're going to have 100 of them down there at one time trying to do something. Okay. So, Phil? Thank you. Uh, from High Street to the boat launch is 872 right. feet. So it's too far. For, so I, just, I agree with Keith. Just let them happen. And it's to that point. See what happens. So do you want to? go to the lake? Go to the lake on the back street. The boat landing? The boat landing, the boat yeah. Landing. Okay, the boat landing. Yeah. It's a road back there that they can get there. 
So do you want me to add that in as part of the access route? route? Yeah. I'll put it in as like number five. Yeah, just Canal Street. Memorial. Canal Street. Canal Street. We said this on Google Maps. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but it is Canal Street. And then we can put a sign right on the bridge that says "No TVs across the bridge." Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna do um, Main Street to Memorial on Main Street, and then I'll just do something like um, boat landing Canal via Street. Canal Street. Yeah. Okay. And whether you do 20 or 25 doesn't matter. Do you? I'll fix it up. Do you allow, um, going by the definition that we have, do you allow dirt bikes and, and such on your trails or just? Yeah, we allow four dirt bikes. Okay. Because I know on a lot of the trails up country, they specifically right. say no dirt bikes. Exactly. We and, do allow them still. And I can picture the dirt bikes being much louder than the ATVs. And that was Faster. the main concern up to this point was, was noise levels. Yeah, it, it is. But at this point, we haven't had trouble with them, so we're letting them, you know, use them. And they haven't torn up our trails. They've done no more damage than, you know, the, the, the regular wear and tear, if you want to call it. So we have continued to allow them. Yeah. So I wrote boat landing access via Canal Street. Trail ends at boat landing is what I'll put. I don't need to put that. No. no. Like I say, just put a sign yeah. up on the bridge that says no ATVs. Yeah, we've got some closed and then we can kind of, and I did put in here that they can park in public parking lots. So one's on High Street, one's on Canal. And there are signs downtown saying where the public parking is. And then other than that, did I have anything else? I'll fix that. And um, they'll be posted. <coughs> I'm uh, on one of them, of them oh, sorry, on, on, all of them, uh, on all of them, we mentioned intersections and streets and all that, that on that, but one of them we mentioned the business name. Uh, and businesses change once in a while. I'm wondering if we can just refer to something that's more, not that, not that these markers won't oh, be around. But if I for just do park, Whistle but, Stop Trailhead? Sure. Yeah. Depot Street, Whistle Stop Trailhead, because that's what I did below. So that will be consistent with what I did below. And I didn't put in the um, store name there. And further up, thank uh, you. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, no worries. And further up, we mentioned um, the opening of the trail, and then generally a, a time frame. Yeah. It'd be more clear if we if, if we, it, we it wouldn't give people uh, an opportunity to argue about interpretation right. if we only defined one of those. So if I just go, when just the whistle ta stop trail generally opens. No, I just I would just take it out just when it opens. It's available. So you don't have. We don't have to define that. You're you're. It feels right when I sort of saw that. That tells me well. I can start in May. Maybe it's not open in May. Then I'd argue. Well, you said it was okay in May. When so, it opens. So does that read right? I like that, I like that better. But when the whistle stop trail is open. Because that way it has a finite end as well. Maybe they should, grammatically, it might be posted open from sunrise to sunset when the whistle drop sale is open. I like that. Yeah. Thank you for this guy. I actually want to give opportunity for people to, to, to find their own interpretation and argue. I've got a nine year old, I know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to, yeah, okay. clear. How's that look? Other suggestions? So are we actually going to post it every are we going to post it as open and post it as closed? Or we don't. The this trail clubs do, right? Because they're the ones that I believe Correct. are like charged by Fish and Wildlife to Close Manage. them down or open. Like like our trails are right now will be probably closed until at least it depends. Maybe the middle of May, maybe near Memorial Day weekend. So it depends on the mud. Right. They they send out the trail master and he just says yay or nay. So, and that's in fish and game. Yeah. I I was taking I was looking at the all of the times and dates the ATV access will be routes will be posted as closed. So where are they posted? Dates and time. I'm saying. From sunrise to sunset, uh, every every sunset, somebody even go and post it as closed. No. Is, is what I'm saying is that, so we're not going to post it as closed. Just to say will be closed. Will be closed because we're not posting it as all of the times. Yeah. 
Again, I'm just going along with Maybe, maybe you should even take out the word posted. It just says it was the I took out posted. Up yeah. above, even. Well, when the ATV access roads will be open from sunset when? Yep. To take out the app. When, but we're not posting it, so I take that out. No, actually, what we do, though, right, the, the signs are covered until it's uncovered yeah. when it's open. the whistle stop trail is open. But if that made, that makes it clear, usually less words makes it more clear. Okay. Any other edits? I need a motion to accept this. Yes. So moved. Second. Second. And moved and seconded. Beecher. All those in favor? <laughs> it's official. Okay. okay. I think you'll have a lot of, um, I've just mentioned it a few the different clubs and um, a lot of people are thrilled. I think it could really open up. Oh, I know there's not a lot of motels, but that now when you could actually put it in J and go right up into like Rangeley and across it and come around. So you could have a lot of people that might want to go like in to in, like come to stay at the, you know, the comfort in. So is and your club thinking of posting a trail, ATV trail map? Oh, we do. We have to update it. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then, then I'm going to go around to all the businesses that have the access off the whistle stop, see if they want to, you know, buy an ad for the back of the paper. I know Shelly is very interested in putting an ad on the back of the map. Yeah. And I'll talk to, you know, Casaleo or whatever local business that wants to do a corporate little sponsorship, and it's not expensive. No. Sure, stop in and see me. Oh, okay. <laughs> stop over by the maple and get some maple right. syrup. Oh, yes, right. Very good. Consideration of Lakeview Cemetery Memorial. Tom. Right. So what I would like to do, um, we've gotten an estimate of a cost to do this is about $150,000, which is really beyond what I had anticipated spending and beyond what I think was com I'm comfortable taking out of the mill um, cemetery fund. But I really, and I'm also uncomfortable, even though we had 100 votes, doing something for the town that they're not necessarily really want to have done. So what I would like to do is put this on as a Warren article for the town meeting to have a discussion about it and kind of get some guidance. And in the meantime, I'll talk to the Lions Club because that's where our monuments are right now and to see what we can do to perhaps enhance them in some way um, and, and work with Lions Club to do that. So I'm just uncomfortable with that kind of money being spent without real having real discussion at a town From meeting. From the town, yeah. Yeah, so I would prefer that we... Not take action, put it on as a warrant, have the discussion, make a decision, and in the meantime, I'll talk to Lions Club about what we might be able to do to enhance that and make it more available to the public, which it is now. Anybody can go there. But, I mean, that's where Charlie Tappan used to do the actual ceremony. That's what we've done in the past there. Uh, so it makes sense to me to do it there. Plus, there is a memorial downtown, too. Yeah, and there is a memorial downtown. So it's, it's a good exercise. Someday, maybe, the, and the town may decide they want to do it. That's okay. But I, want, I don't feel comfortable pushing yeah, it. Yeah, they might want a place where the urns can go. And um, that's still something that, that the town needs to do anyway, particularly on that one side towards carcasses because of his well-being there. So that's something you should talk with the sexton about, I think. And while the money, cemetery money is up as high as it is, is to use it to buy one or two of those to put in place. And maybe do a little landscaping down around that. You know, we've talked about it for years, you know, yes. and then come up with the fees, which will start to get, which will get your money back for the cost of putting it in. So other thoughts on having a warrant article for um, town discussion? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So let's have it as a motion. Make a motion that we put it on as a warrant article to have the town discussion to decide what the next steps will be on the memorial. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Been moved and seconded. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Discussion of ARPA funding suggestions. I finally put together the spreadsheet and I took all the suggestions you've made since as far back as November and added them on here. And um, also shared it so in case anybody else wanted to add any on. At this point, we've received half of our funding, which is 209,119. That's the interest through February because it is in an interest bearing account at Andrew Scoggin Bank. We received, I think it was in December, 
a small check um, supplemental funding. These are the amounts that are, we haven't received the bill for this one yet, but th that's the amount that will go out for the optoimagery mapping, and that has been paid. So the others are all suggestions, and I put over there places that monies, or maybe even I've suggested some of it, all changeable. The suggestion amount comes up to 306 in the actual funds for right now what we have. Um, we have 143 left. Another 209 will be coming. So it's not to say, you know, to make any decisions today. It's to finally get it written down, start taking a, you know, more in-depth look. I have not start put down suggestions on Facebook yet. That's the only thing I haven't done come up with a lot, I mean, between what you've all come up with and others that we've heard, there's there's a fair amount on them. I separated well, right here. If you're willing to do something on sidewalks, the com most complaints I've heard about sidewalks is Lake Road. But I don't know where you would put the sidewalk or how long it would be or... Right. And that's something that maybe John should look into at some point because that's where we've gotten significant complaints. So the sidewalk right there that we did was Depot Street sidewalk because that is... A, a big concern right there and we know it needs to be upgraded and there's some things that we're working on that I'll bring up um, at an, another time on meetings and so forth. Um, so that was why that was put down because there does need to be some upgrading for the, it's a route to the school and it's mm -hmm. got a bad crosswalk there. And if you'd like, I'm going to add in Lake Street sidewalk because you just suggested it. David, if I may? Sure. So, well, a lot of these are suggestions that, you know, I think we can mull over and, and look at. You know, there, there is one that I really think that is, you know, emerging that we should really deal with is the one that is the hazard premium pay for the police department. The reason I say that is that um, looking at what retention, we just, we just went through last night, finished up our budget committee, and we recognized that, you know, Bring on two new officers, more or less about $45,000 with the Criminal Justice Academy and overtime for other officers. So part of, you know, making sure that we retain our police department in value is to look at hazard pay, premium pay for the police department. And I've calculated it out to be about $68,000. What that would do is that's about $1,000 a week for 68 weeks. Um, in looking at, and again, we can go into this further on, but I just want to let everybody know where, where I'm coming from is about 95% of where the Farmington is right now as a hazard pay premium to allow us to, us meaning the board, as well as the town, to start looking at what we can do long term because it's not sustainable. We've talked about this before. It's not sustainable to not get together with the other towns to look at shared services. Um, you know whether it's the fire department, right, police department, uh, but we need time to be able to do that and potentially even put something on a warrant article so that we could get together with the other towns to look at this more holistically. I want to make sure that we don't lose our officers right now, um, that they're being enticed away, and this would give us a stopgap between now and fiscal year 24, um, understanding that it would sunset, but it gives us that amount of time, and that's why the other ones I see as um, we can deliberate, but I would like to at some point in the near future really look at this as something to move forward on. I'm no. I, I agree with Steph, I, and I, we talked a little bit about it last night. Uh, that's the other Warren article that I really do want to see us put on there is talk to the community about we put a committee together that begins to look at um, consolidation within the towns around here in Franklin County, and in the meantime, we just need to protect what we do have. So I would support both concepts as we go forward. So this money we have to have spent by September of 24. Is that when it is? Or we have to at least tell no, them how we're going to spend it. Has, yeah, to, has to be, be spent. spent. Okay. And and that would that would fall in line with where 
what I'm recommending is the 68 weeks. If we were to say in a couple weeks, look through a you know hazard pay, looking at maybe opera stipends on a on a pay basis, and it would bring us to fiscal year 24, which and you sorted it out. Yeah, gives us enough time to sort it out. So, what I'm proposing is that we come maybe come back in two weeks. Um, with a proposal to look at that one item. The rest of them, I think that we, we have some time on, but I really do think that we owe it uh, to the town um, and to our department to make sure that we retain our good officers and where we stay competitive as we go through the process of looking at what we can do for the long term. Well, and I think to some respect, any of that stuff, because you have a time limit and when you have to spend it, you don't have a lot of times because you got to do all the planning and executing of contracts and bids and you know you don't have a lot of time to make some decisions. Um, not saying I'm looking for any decisions tonight because tonight's just about discussion. But um, you know, it, it, and I will say for the hazard pay, I hear what you're saying, but also at the same time we need to look at the CBAs and how it affects everybody in the town. That was the approach we took back in December. We looked at all employees. So it, that needs to be considered when we have the discussion about it in the future. Um, you know, the, the Wilson Lake retaining wall, did we ever get an estimate on that? We did, I forgot to look it up for you. Um, but I'll, I'll try to do it right now. Yeah, that's the one I keep jumping on because if, if, right. if we were concerned that we couldn't do it, but now I'm watching, as I say, your friends in Farmington going to put a roof on yep. it. It seems to me this is environmentally, uh, it's used by people in the outdoors. Enhanced it, public, public accessibility. accessibility. The whole bunch of things. And, and because of the timeline for spending, it seems to me it was more than $100,000. There may be a piece of it that we can carve out that can get done with done this before. money before the deadlines there, which would be good. I don't know exactly what it is, but we can look at that from that budget standpoint. And the other one I, I think is, is the electric sign at the safety building. You know, the banners are nice, but it would be nice to put the sign up like we have out in the town office about what's going on downtown. Right. And it's because not everybody goes up the Weld Road. Yeah. Well, yeah, and this one's too bright anyway. We might as well just move this one down there and not have it up here. <laughs> well, you could just turn it down in the program. I'm but. rolling my eyes at you. <laughs> It's big enough that you can read it, though. Yep. It doesn't blink. Yep. Anyway, I, I think these are great. So, so again, I'd, I'd like to come back, especially with that one item with the hazard pay in a couple weeks, and work out some finer details. I'm not saying we we shouldn't do it with the rest of them, but I'm suggesting that we come back in a couple weeks. Sounds good to me. Okay. Any and other thoughts of stuff to go on the list? Might be good now to put it out on Facebook to see what other ideas people have. I thought this might be a good place for your monument. But I don't know if it'll no, work. Because it's, this is the monument. The money. We're not worried about the dead people being close together. <laughs> Just kidding. I think we're pretty close. I think they're already distant. <laughs> not <talks>. transmissible. <laughs> I think when we put it on Facebook, we'll just do it as a add suggestions yeah. to yeah. comments yeah. or email, whichever they want. That be easier than any type of survey. Right. And I can even link some suggestions or something. She's giving Keith's and, email address. Have them all sent there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and you can you can add to this to Phil dot Hilton at edu something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Manager's report. Just to give you an update, um, we are working with the the more Falls and um, Jay on getting out net the solar proposal for net energy billing, and we are working with Maine Municipal Bomb Bank. Main power options. Main power options, Jonathan. So we're we've been moving along. We're still meeting on that. Uh, under Part B, the Planning Board, there is having a public hearing on four amendments on Thursday. I'll post that to Facebook tomorrow, too. Is that going to be a Zoom meeting? So No, it's actually not going to be a Zoom meeting. It's in... I can ask Could if they, they want to have it. Just 
Yeah. I can't be here, but I'm going to be in another town. It would be good if we did stream it and so that it becomes more publicly accessible. People want to watch it. They can right. participate, but can watch it. The only it. way of streaming it is the way we did it the other night. That's how we record a Zoom meeting. But that's the only we, way to really we, record a meeting, yeah. isn't it? Well, it's, the, it's not the only way, but it's certainly the I easiest mean, way for us we, to we do don't, it. We don't have um, Mount Blue TV at public hearings. Okay. It would just give more town people can also, access. We can always put it on Facebook the way we have in the past. Yes, that's true. So I, I will see if they can um, do that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the Share Shack opened um, last Saturday, and I have not found out how it has gone. I went uh, Sunday, and yeah. um, uh, Walter told me the first person to drop something off broke the guidelines. It said no knives, and there was a big sword, old sword that was laid out. <laughs> um, it it looks phenomenal. He also said one person came in and had still stuff in a box and wanted to just leave it, and he made them take it out of the box. Um, he said there were no issues at this point in time. They have done a nice job of straightening that out. And I think we should post this on Facebook and post it. was going to after tonight. And maybe a bunch of flyers that could be available down there. I know Walter doesn't really want to give them out. but we, I gave maybe, him about 40 the other oh, day. Great. So he's it, got these. And, it, and for everybody that's watching or listening or that's writing in the newspaper, is that this is our shot. If this doesn't work, we'll close it. But it looks really good. The guys spent the time out there, and it's nicely organized, and it's displayed nicely. And I think if it continues this way, it'll it'll be successfully open. And at the end, you know, Walter will decide at what point he's going to just take what was there. Said we've left it here long enough. It's going to go in the front end the loader and go into the dump. Uh, but uh, they've done a really nice job doing it. So. So the main guidelines that we came up with through the recycling meeting um, are right here on this side. Individuals must see the attendant before leaving any items. Limit um, one visit per day per car. We don't care where what they do with it after, but only one per day per car because of um, traffic and so forth. And acceptance of flea market and yard sale items will be limited. Please see the attendant. Items must be removed from boxes and newspapers, and items will be accepted no later than 30 minutes before the transfer station closes. So I, I have a suggestion that maybe we get this, and I'd be happy to do it and pay for it, is the, si the size of that calendar up there, if we can get one of those like easels that stands up like that, I'll get it, I'll get it laminated. So we can. The only thing is, you got you, you, it's you so many signs. Signs and the wind blows and it will fall down. If you're going to do yeah. something like that, I'd put it on the side. Put it on the side of the building. building. <coughs> John's ordered another sign Time for the part. side of the building, so we'll have to check to see what he's ordered and if he had any of this. But on even, there. even on the side of the building, you're going in, they're leaving the garage door open so that they can keep an eye on it. If you close yeah. that, you can't see it. So with that open, there really isn't a place. Although you could make it smaller and put it right there on the. A little bigger than this on on the either side of the garage. You could make one that says guidelines and put it on one side of the garage and the other on the other side, so the font would be bigger. So Tiff, we'll take a look, and if there's something that might work, um, because sure. he is waiting for a sign to come in, and I was waiting until tonight's meeting before I posted it on Facebook. Those guys have done a really nice job. I agree. I was there Sunday. I saw the sword as well. Walter, Walter, show me the sword, the black sheath. Yeah. Well, it's not a knife; it's a sword. Yeah. <laughs> no, it says no knife. So. Okay. Um, my last item I don't have on here. It came up yesterday. Um, we will need to hold a public hearing for uh, for application for the USDA grant for the water transmission line. Dergo Engineering is starting to work on that, and they were notified. So we've uh, sent out an ad tonight, and it will be at the next meeting. Okay. So that's going to be the beginning of our meeting, eh? We'll do that at the beginning of our next meeting, yes. Anything else? I don't have anything else. Other business. Where are we at with the foreclosures? I know we had 30 days. Yeah, I, don't know I can when tell that... you where we are on this. Thank you. Um, there were two separate owners of four separate properties. 
one um, I reached out again right after the meeting and uh, one owner of three properties has made arrangements it's been paid off okay the second one actually is um, it's in the care the, the owner of that one has passed away there is a lien on it from the state for main care so it's it's in in with a lawyer right now they're reviewing it they were supposed to call me back today depending upon what they do will be will we will know what our next steps are if they give it up and it is the son who owns it we need to start our foreclosure process again because he didn't get the notices so it, that one's still up in limbo and, and we're waiting for further word but the the large ones were paid so we're just down to that one so just one property just that one property great Thank you. great yep um also then uh, while we're asking where are we with potentially putting out an rfp for the uh old, the woolen mill that's my next project. Okay, we, we did the budget, and I understand. Yeah, that. So yeah, just think I of something that should. It's at the top of my list. Because there, there are some people that have that been asking about office. it, and, and I think it's got some potential it, it to get needs back to on be. the tax rolls somewhere or another. Yeah. Anything else? Executive session. And will we go in executive session pursuant to M one MRSA 4056A personnel? Second. I moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous.